SmartSuite has just released a new feature for its forms, allowing you to pre-fill values and make this a much more streamlined experience for your users. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, a really common use case for forms is to be able to manage registrations for different events. Let's say that we're hosting a corporate event and we wanna be able to invite our different clients to this event, and so this form that you can see here, typically you'd be asking people for their name and for their email and their phone number, their contact information, as well as some questions about the event itself. But because you're using SmartSuite as a database already, you shouldn't have to ask people for their contact information over and over again if you already have that information on file, if they're already a contact record inside of your database in SmartSuite. So the next logical thing to say would be, let's take our contact and actually link it to this record, this form submission, and link our event to this as well. But the problem here is that if we just expose this and said, hey, choose your contact information, well, we'd be exposing all of the different contacts. And that's really not a good practice. We don't want to give that information, open it up to everybody. So somehow we want a way to be able to tell our form who's the person who's registering and then make it so that they don't have to submit these additional details. And so this is where pre-filling forms comes in. It's really handy. And we've got this really nice article that Brian updated for us. And so essentially what we're doing is we're plugging in our form URL and then we have a question mark because we have these query parameters or URL parameters that we're sending. And then we use this syntax to be able to say in front of our field name, we're going to have it say, prefill and this prefill has to be uppercase in order to do this and then we're going to have the name of our field and we can set it equal to the value that we want to show in our form now the idea of using these parameters in our urls is essentially allowing us to send information to the web application we're interacting with and this is nothing unique to smart suite in fact this is all over in any kind of web application you might use so for example if i'm on amazon and i search for a camera if i go into the url i could see it's the same kind of format where it says question mark and k presumably keyword equals camera and so this is the way that as we search we're sending information to amazon in order for it to be able to filter our results and so it's the same idea here we've got our form url and then we say question mark prefill contact and then we send that contact with its information in order to prefill that value so back inside of smart suite let's talk about how we would actually construct the url that we need in order to be able to pass the information that we want. So for my example, we actually wanna send two different values. We want to send the contact, the person that's going to be associated here. And then we also want to be able to send the event. So we'll actually have two pieces of information and you can do this with essentially as many fields as you want. If you wanted to pre-fill their meal preference because you knew that they're vegetarian and you wanna pre-fill that, you could do that as well. So rather than doing this on my attendees record, this is where I actually take the form submissions that come in. I'm going to go to my contacts table and this is where we're going to construct our URL. Now I've done this here as a formula. And the reason I'm doing this is because presumably we'd wanna create an automation that would then send all of our contacts an email to say, hey, we'd love to invite you to our event. Here is the link and then it's going to send a unique link for each of those contacts in our list. And so as we construct this URL, it's going to essentially encode it specifically for that person. So we've got Gary here, and his link is going to be slightly different in the information that we send than the next person, Joe McDonald. So you can create a new formula. I'm gonna modify this existing one to show you how this works. The very first thing you're going to want to do is use the concat function. This allows us to concatenate the text and different variables together so that we can come up with one string, one collection of numbers and letters. In this case, it's going to be the URL that we create. So we are going to concat multiple pieces of information. And the first piece of information that we need is going to be our form URL. Now, if you're not super familiar with SmartSuite forms, when you're creating a form, you can share that form and it's going to give you that shareable link this is going to be what you're going to copy and paste into your formula. So once we've pasted in our form, you'll notice that this has my own form ID. This is unique to my specific form. Then we're going to add that question mark. And that question mark is super important. You need to make sure you have that. That's where it separates out the form URL 
from all the other information, all the other pre-filled fields that we're going to send to our request. In this case, you can see that the first field that I have is event. And remember, it's really important that we capitalize that P in pre-fill. We have underscore, and then we have event, which is our linked record here. And we wanna say that this is equal to, and then here's where we close our double quotes here, because we now need to take the information and inject this dynamically from our event. So let me X out of here for a second so you can see what I'm talking about. We have this linked field here of event, and this is what we wanna then be able to pass in. Whatever value we have here, we want to send into our event form. Now here's where it can get a little bit tricky. So we have the option to either send the name of the event, or we can send the ID, that unique record identifier of our event. Either one is okay. But it's really important to make sure that if you're using the name, that you wanna make sure that all of the unique values, let's say if you have a question mark or an apostrophe or some special punctuation, you wanna make sure that this gets URL encoded. It's a special way of removing special characters and injecting it with something that the machine can understand. So a really easy way to be able to do this is to encode the URL component. This is a function that we have within SmartSuite, which takes that event that we have, our linked record, and gives us the ability to automatically encode it for us. Now, if you're feeling particularly brave, if you scroll down, there's a guide on how you can actually encode this yourself. If you have a space, then it needs to return the percent %20. And we have this whole little guide here but honestly, you're gonna find it so much easier just to automatically encode those values. Now, I did wanna have an example where we could show the event. This is the name of the event itself and using prefill event, but I would recommend wherever possible, instead of using the name and instead of using the name of the field, that we're actually using the record identifiers and the field identifiers. So for this example, I also wanted to send the contact information. And so this is the unique ID. This is the field ID rather than saying prefill contact, I can actually grab this information. If I close out of here and we come up to the top and go down to our solution API, then I can go to my attendees table and any of my fields are going to have their unique identifiers over here. So I could search for contact and we can see here's now the unique field ID for that specific contact field. And so I can paste that field ID in. So we've got prefill the field ID and then in this case, because I'm on my contact record, I'm saying, let's actually send the unique identifier of that contact record rather than sending the name. Because for example, we might have multiple John Smiths. And so if we were to send John Smith, it's not going to for sure find that specific record, which is why it's always a better practice to send the unique record ID itself. And in terms of fields, it's better to use the field ID because there's always a chance that people are going to relabel the field itself and when you change that, that would break anything that you've already set up. So the last thing to point out here is because we have multiple different URL parameters, we're sending both the event and the contact that we have to have this ampersand in between it as well. So we're saying, hey, this key equals this value and this other key equals this value. And so we could attach multiple other ones if we wanted to. And so back in the SmartSuite documentation, they've done a really nice job of showing us which are the supported field types and examples of each. So I'm using specific records, linked records that we're doing here. We could do this for date fields if you wanna inject today's date, or if you wanna be able to send, even smart docs are supported. So I'm really impressed with all the different kinds of fields that we can use here. There's a couple that aren't supported, but honestly, it's all the ones that you're using on a daily basis that are going to be supported here. So now if we close out of our formula, we should be able to stretch this and kind of see what's going on just to give it a once over look here. So you can see that the event is pulling in that global startup summit. And then we've got our unique identifier for the contact. And then this is pulling in our respective contact record. And you can see that they're all unique for each record that we have. So as I mentioned before, this link then would be ready to go. We could send that via an automation to our different users or contacts that we wanna invite them and they'd get their own special link that we've generated. In this case, let's just go ahead and open up an example so we can see what's going on. So let me paste in this link to the browser. And here you can see it did exactly what we wanted. It injected our event as well as the contact record. And so that means we don't really need all of these additional fields if we already know who they are. 
So now on our form itself, we've got the option we could probably just take out some of these additional fields if presumably we don't need them to update those on our record. And we just have the contact and the event here as well as their confirmation and meal preference. So now here's what our form looks like if we have the event and contact link. But again, you probably don't wanna expose this to the user themselves that they can choose the different contact values here. So let's go ahead and actually hide these from the user. Now back, now back on our form, I could click on contact and say, hide this field from users. I could do the same with the event as well, open that up and hide it from our users. And if we refresh this, even though we no longer see these fields, they're still behind the scenes linking that information. So even though the user doesn't see it, we're still able to actually have those records linked. Now, to be fair, we still might wanna get a little bit creative here, because if you just got a form and it didn't mention your name, you might not quite understand what's going on. So I might still leave like a first name field and pre-fill it with their first name, just so that they know who's expected to attend the event, that it doesn't feel like I'm just on this random record. So I think there's a couple things we could still do from a usability experience to make this a little bit better. But overall, I hope this gives you a nice preview of how you can use this pre-filling feature on SmartSuite's forms in your next project. If you have any questions about your own SmartSuite build, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.